New details, though, on the dramatic arrest of that yoga instructor accused of murdering her romantic rival. U.S. Marshals say Caitlin Armstrong used multiple aliases and then traveled to Costa Rica on someone else's passport, all in an effort to avoid capture. Our chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, is in Austin with more on all of this. Good morning, Matt. Hey, good morning, Amy. You got it right. Multiple aliases, two passports, cosmetic surgery under the name of one of those aliases. And authorities now revealing that Caitlin Armstrong might have been able to stay in Costa Rica for a long time had it not been for a single tip that helped them piece together her escape from Austin to New York to that remote Costa Rica beach town. This morning, those startling revelations from authorities about murder suspect Caitlin Armstrong's escape from the U.S., almost as if ripped from a spy thriller. It was discovered Armstrong used different names, aliases, under the alias of Beth Martin, Liz, and Ari Martin. Armstrong used these names at yoga studios and other lodging since her arrival in Costa Rica on May 18th. Authorities say the 34-year-old yoga instructor had two passports, multiple identities, and changed her appearance, a receipt under a different name in her possession, for plastic surgery. I will say she had a bandage on her nose uh, with a little bit of discoloration under her eyes. You know, her statement was that it came from a surfboard incident, and I think it's just, we'll leave it at that. For more than six weeks, she had eluded authorities, who say that on May 11th, she flew into a jealous rage and gunned down pro-cyclist Mariah Wilson, who she thought was involved with her boyfriend. Surveillance video showing her Jeep Grand Cherokee seen driving near the house where Wilson was staying at the time of the murder. On May 13th, Austin police questioned her at the station, but said they could not detain her because of a technicality. Within 24 hours, Armstrong sold that Jeep Grand Cherokee to CarMax for $12,200. The next day, May 14th, she boarded a series of flights from Austin to Houston to New York. Then she disappeared. Armstrong boarded the flight and fled to international territory by presenting a passport that did not belong to her, but belonged to someone that was closely associated with her. With no trace of Armstrong, the U.S. Marshals upgrading it to a major case on June 6th. Then they got a tip that led them to discover she had traveled to Costa Rica. Alonso Soto Chacon is the subdirector of the Immigration Police in Costa Rica. He said, I think she came here because she must have thought it would be easier because there are so many tourists and she would be able to avoid controls because of that. But at the same time, we're a small country, so we're able to find people quickly. And we believe after this month and a half investigation, she really got comfortable. Uh, she felt that she had gotten away. Uh, but I really was with the long arm of the law. And Costa Rican authorities telling us that when they arrested her at first, Armstrong was quiet and compliant, but she refused to admit her real identity. And people I spoke to who met her there in Costa Rica and authorities saying that eventually being an international fugitive took a toll on her, that when she was arrested, she looked exhausted. Amy. All right, Matt Gutman, thank you for that. We're going to bring in ABC News Chief Legal Analyst Dan Abrams for more. So, yes, you just heard that Costa Rican authorities say it's a small country, it's easy to find people, but they actually had to go to great lengths, investigators here in this country, to track her down, and it wasn't that easy. Right. Remember, the last time they know it's her is at LaGuardia Airport. That's the last time she would used her name, her passport. They get a tip that takes them to Newark Airport, but the tip doesn't tell them where she's going. So then they have to figure out, okay, which passport did she use? They're able to figure that out. That takes them to Costa Rica. But now she's got to, they've got to find out, okay, where in Costa Rica is she? Using multiple aliases, following her around to multiple places. No one called this in and said, she's here, she's here. So they had to actually do police work to find her. They ultimately were able to find the bus that she had taken across the country. That takes them to the right place and eventually they find her. But it's a fascinating story when you look at piece by piece yeah. how they actually got her. Yeah, and, and then she went to great lengths to avoid capture, uh, going as so as far as police say they believe she had plastic surgery to change her appearance. Could any of her actions in terms of fleeing the country and how she tried to avoid capture be used against her in court? Absolutely. Consciousness of guilt. Uh, it happens all the time. Uh, we see it introduced against a defendant to say you knew you were guilty and therefore we should be able to use that against you. Wow. And then there's this passport. U.S. Yeah. Marshal saying she used someone else's passport who was close to her, who looked like her. There are some guesses as to who that may have been. Yeah. Could that person be in some legal trouble? If that person knew, 
If that person helped her, if that person aided her, absolutely. If she just took the passport and the person didn't know she'd taken it, uh, then probably not. That's going to be the key question. Did the person whose passport it was know that she was helping her? Yeah, a lot of questions still to yep. be answered. Dan Abrams, thank you as right. always. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.